Good morning, friends. I trust you are all doing great. Welcome to this worship experience. Let us pray. Put your hands together and close your eyes. Good. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Our rock and our defender, we praise you. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you. Lord, let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you. Meet with us in a new way today and let your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. So are you ready to dance? All right, come on, let's go. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. I like to think about the goodness of the Lord. He gives me everything I need and so much more. So I just want to lift my hands and say, me everything I needed so much more so I just want to lift my hands and say that I love him I just want to
Jesus loves me so, loves me so, loves me so. Jesus loves me so, loves me so, loves me so. Jesus loves me so.
Praise the Lord, children. That hallelujah needs to be louder than that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That was an awesome time of praise. And now we're going to sing the song titled Worthy of It All. As we close our eyes and hope, open our hearts to God, I want us to worship Him, recognizing that He is the King of Kings and that He is the Lord of Lords and that He owns everything that we have and there's nothing we can give Him that He doesn't already have. Father, we worship You. Hallelujah. Amen. Day and 
Father, we thank you because you deserve all the praise. You deserve all our worship. You deserve all our adoration. Father, you are worthy of it all. We thank you because you love us so much. We thank you because you are faithful. Father, we pray that as we learn at your feet to this morning, that you will speak to us yourself, that you will touch our lives, that you will change our lives. In the Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. Welcome to our final God Will Do It Again service of the year 2023. Yes, it's our year of enlargement. The theme of this God Will Do It Again is the rain. So, with excitement and expectation, we embrace all that the rain is bringing into our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So, when you hear Sirach, what's it going to be? You shout, the rain. Now, let's do it together. Sirach, what's it going to be? You say, the rain. The rain is here and it will benefit us all in Jesus' name amen so are you ready with your five items and what are your five items your bible your fresh fire devotional your notebook your pen and your offering all right then let's begin today our memory verse is from deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 12 i will be reading from the new king james version and it says the lord will open to you his good treasure the heavens to give the rain to your land in its season and bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 12 and it says, The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens to give the rain to your land in its season and bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. Amen. Do you love rainy days? Have you ever played or danced in the rain? Rain comes with many benefits such as watering the earth, helping plants grow, providing water for animals, plus rain makes everything fresh and clean. God's promise to us, this God will do it again season, is the rain. Remember, God's word is a weapon for us children of God. And as we hear it and believe it, we also must engage it by praying and praising. And that is what we have been doing for the past 21 days here in God's favorite house. When the farmer knows that the rain is coming, he does certain things, right? For the farmer, also the rain coming means enlargement. And that is what this rain will do for us also in Jesus name. Amen. So, as God's children, what should we do when God says, the rain? We're going to look at an example in the Bible in 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 41 to 44. It is a story about how Elijah prepared for the rain when just like you and I, God told him the rain was coming. So let's go into our Bible story. So our Bible story is about Elijah and the rain. Our anchor scripture is 1 Kings 18, 41, 43, and 44. But our story actually starts back from 1 Kings chapter 17. And in chapter 17 of 1 Kings, God had sent Elijah to King Ahab to declare to him that there will be no rain or dew in the land for a few years. This immediately shows us that God controls the rain, right? Now, what do you think will happen when there is no rain? Can you guess? Yes, plants, animals, and eventually people will die. And in 1 Kings chapter 18, 
after three years, God tells Elijah to go back to Ahab and tell him that God is sending the rain. Wow! The Bible tells us that by this time, the drought in the land was really, really bad. Maybe some of us or our parents have been experiencing a rough patch. God is sending us rain today in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, let's dive into 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 41, 43, and 44 to learn what we should do now that the rain is here. We see that Elijah trusted God's promise and prepared for the rain. Elijah teaches us to trust God's promises and get ready for the blessings that God has in store for us. So, let's follow Elijah's steps. Are you ready? Okay. 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 41 says, Then Elijah said to Ahab, Now, go, eat and drink. A heavy rain is coming. Verse 43 then Elijah said to his servants, Go and look towards the sea. The servant went and looked. He said, I see nothing. Elijah told him to go and look again. This happened seven times. Verse 44, the seventh time, the servant said, I see a small cloud. It is the size of of the fist of a man's hand. It is coming from the sea. Elijah told the servants, go to Ahab, tell him to get his chariot ready and go home now. If he does not leave now, the rain will stop him. The rain and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. Then he bowed down on the ground. Then he said to his servant, Go and look out toward the sea. Seven times Elijah told him to go look. Finally, the seventh time, the servant saw a small cloud. There is a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea. Tell Ahab to get his chariot ready and start for home now. Otherwise, the rain will stop him. rain will not stop you in Jesus name amen so step one go and look go and look means be expectant first Kings chapter 18 verse 41 one of the ways we show that we believe what God says is by our actions the story is told of people who were believing God for the rain but only a small boy took an umbrella to the meeting so who believed? The small boy, right? God wants us to be on the lookout. He wants us to expect the rain because he has said the rain is coming. Elijah told his servant to go and look. Go and look means you are expecting something. Yes, the rain has been declared, but you need to go and look and be expectant and build anticipation. Sadly, most times when God wants to do something, we are not expectant. Expectation is so important and God wants us to go and look, to be expectant. Why? God can be trusted to keep his promises. Today, we'll be learning a new word and the word is Petricor. Say it, pear, tree, core. 
Fantastic. Moments before it rains, that earth is pleasant smell we can smell is what is known as petrichor. Our noses can detect up to a trillion different scents, and many of them are tied deeply to memories and emotions, like your grandma's house, or your first dog, or the smell of rain. Storm winds carry an orchestra of separate smells, but the earthy odor that precedes a storm can be traced to three chemical sources. Before a thunderstorm, you're probably smelling ozone, which interestingly gets its name from the Greek word meaning to smell. Now, the electrical charge of lightning high up in approaching storm clouds splits oxygen gas into separate atoms, and some of those can reform into ozone. That ozone is swept ahead of the advancing storm by windy downdrafts and down to your nose level. As rain begins to fall, a new smell springs from the soil, that pleasantly pungent perfume we call petrichor. Is it not amazing that God has designed us to naturally smell the rain and to sense when he's doing something amazing? So, be expectant, engage your senses, because the rain is here, petrichor, hallelujah. Psalm 123 verse 1 says, I lift up my eyes to you, O God, enthroned in heaven. We keep looking to the Lord our God, just as servants keep their eyes on their master, as a slave girl watches her mistress for the slightest signal. Today, as you look, you will hear the rain, you will smell the rain, and you will see the rain in Jesus' name. Amen. Step two, look towards the sea. Be specific. First Kings chapter 18, verse 43. When it had not rained, he told his servant, look toward the sea. Do you see anything? Nothing, the servant answered. Look again, Elijah said. The servant replied, still nothing. Elijah's servant looked seven times. The seventh time he said, I see a cloud no bigger than a man's hand. Hurry, tell King Ahab to get his chariot down from the mountain before it rains so hard he won't be able to, Elijah instructed. Dark clouds filled the sky, the wind picked up, and heavy rain fell. It was the first rain in three years. Have you ever been asked to bring something that you had no idea where it was? That can be really difficult, right? Elijah told his servant exactly where to look because it is so, so important. If someone is looking in the wrong direction, what will happen? They can easily miss what is coming. God does not want us to miss what he has for us. And beginning from today, you will look in the right direction in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's hear a louder amen from you in Jesus' name. Amen. Good job. So one sure way to always look in the right direction is to ask the Holy Spirit and follow his leading. Why did Elijah say, look towards the sea? It is because he understood the water cycle. Do you know the water cycle? The water cycle is the process in which water is recycled over and over again. Water moves from land to the sky and back again. There are four stages of the water cycle. Evaporation, condensation, precipitation and collection. First evaporation takes place. This is when the sun heats up the water on land, in lakes, rivers and seas. The water is turned into a gas called water vapour. The water vapour rises into the sky. Next, condensation takes place. This is when the water vapour in the air cools down. It changes into small drops of water this forms clouds. Clouds consist of millions of droplets of water. Then water falls as precipitation. This occurs when the droplets in the clouds become too big and too heavy for the air to hold them. So they fall as precipitation. 
Precipitation can take many forms, including rain, hail, and snow. When the water falls as rain, hail, or snow, it's collected in lakes, rivers, and seas. This is the complete water cycle. The cycle then starts all over again. So Elijah was asking, has the condensation happened yet? While Elijah was sending his servant, he was also on the mountain praying. Faith and science work together. As we wait on God for the rain, we must not give up. Say to yourself, I will not give up. This is a powerful lesson that Elijah and his servant teach us. Elijah was willing to pray as long as it took and his servant was also prepared to keep looking for as long as was required. Now we move on to step three. And step three is, what do you see? Recognize God's signal. 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 44a says, what do you see? You need to pay attention to see what God is doing. Elijah's servant saw a small cloud the size of a man's fist. To see a cloud above the sea is not out of place, right? However, because the servant knew that his master was trusting God for the rain, he did not miss the small cloud. As you look, do not dismiss anything you see. Take it back to God in prayer. After three years of no rain, what can a small cloud do? But God's ways are higher than our ways. Sirach, what do we see? We see the rain and so shall it be in Jesus name. Amen. With God, a small cloud is a big deal. We must keep our eyes open to see what God is showing us. God talks to us in different ways, so be alert. Sometimes it's not with words, but with a feeling right inside, like a gentle nudge. Pay attention to it because it can just be God giving you a clue. Elijah shouted when he got the report of the small cloud because he was expecting God to keep his promise. We must act on the signals we get. And God will honor our faith with rain in abundance. Amen. Who is excited to be a great signal detective for God? I know I am. Are you? Great. Now we go on to step four. Go home. Repent. Our anchor text for step four is 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 44b. You see, home for the child of God is God's presence. And for those who have not given their lives to Jesus yet, go home means repent. Turn to God in repentance. As the rain comes down, for God's people, it is a blessing. But for those who are not with God, it will stop them. The rain will not stop you in Jesus' name. Amen. This is why it is very important for you to come to God and remain in God so that the rain will aid you and not stop you. Acts 3.19 says, Now repent of your sins and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped away. Go home also means relax, knowing that God will do what he has said he will do. Go home also means rejoice, hallelujah, because the rain is here. So, our action points are go and look, but do not just look everywhere aimlessly. No, look towards the sea. Trust the Holy Spirit to guide your eyes. As you look, what do you see? Pay attention so you do not miss or dismiss any of the signs God is showing you. Then, go home. Home is God's presence. Go home, repent, relax, and rejoice evermore. So, Sirach, 
what's it going to be? The rain. Amen and amen. Baba, we your presence. Let it rain. Oh, your rain. Let it fall on me. Open the floodgates in abundance and cause your rain to fall on me. Baba, open the floodgates in abundance and cause your rain to fall on me. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for this season of rain. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, as I take a step of faith to go and look, my expectations will not be cut short. As I specifically look towards you, I will recognize your signals and obediently take the right actions. In your presence, I will relax and rejoice forever in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Open. Let the earth be glad. Let the distant shores rejoice. Clouds and thick darkness surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and consumes his foes on every side. His lightning lights up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord. Heavens proclaim his righteousness and all the people see his glory. Oh God, let it rain. Let it rain over the city. Oh, show us your glory, God. Pour out your spirit. Let it rain over our children. Let it rain over our men and women. Oh God, let it rain. Let it rain. Thank you for tuning in today. Remember, wash your hands, wash your hands, clean, 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 and sanitize your hands. Have an amazing rest of the week. God bless you.